when a ride mechanic failed to tighten two bolts on the wheel of a popular ride at Disneyland, and a manager failed to check the work was done before signing it off, it would set off a chain of events that would lead to disaster, with multiple injuries and one rider even losing his life. This is the story of the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad accident at Disneyland in California. Disneyland is said to be the happiest place on earth, an unmistakable icon of American popular culture. With instantly recognizable characters based on the movie creations of Disney Studios, Disneyland Park in California attracts around 15 million guests each year. Opened in July of 1955, the Anaheim Park was the first of the franchise and the only one to be designed and built under the direct supervision of Walt Disney himself. In September of 1979, Disneyland would open what would soon become an iconic staple of several Disney parks around the world, the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Based on the theme of a haunted mining train in the American Midwest, the ride would become an instant hit for the park and would even play a role in an Indiana Jones film in 1984. But even the happiest place on earth is not immune to things going wrong. And for some unlucky guests caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, their time in the happiest place on earth can also become their last place on earth. On September the 5th, 2003, the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad was operating with just two train sets. A third train set would join the circuit later that morning, having not been in service since undergoing routine maintenance three days earlier. As part of that routine maintenance, the train was taken apart and all the axles, wheels and bogies were thoroughly inspected. After the inspection was completed, the mechanics reassembled the train and delivered it back to the ride. It would remain unused for the next three days. However, no one was aware that the Disneyland maintenance staff had failed to tighten two bolts on the front left side axle of the locomotive guide wheel assembly. The failure was compounded by a manager who should have caught the error, but signed the work off as completed without actually having checked it himself. At around 10.30am on the 5th, the defective train set was added to the ride, bringing the total number of trains in use to three. With park guests aboard, the train completed several cycles without any sign of trouble. Still, with each ride completed, the incorrectly tightened bolts on the guide wheel assembly began to loosen further. At some point within the first hour of the train's operation, ride operators began noticing a clanking sound coming from the train set. This might have been felt in the form of vibration from the guests riding near the front of the train. However, despite the unusual sounds coming from the train, the ride operators, not being mechanically minded, continued to allow guests to ride it. The train would complete 12 cycles, at which point staff finally decided it would be removed for inspection following its next run. However, most likely during the 12th cycle, one of the retaining bolts of the locomotive guide wheel assembly had detached from the axle. As the train entered the final zone before the station, the second retaining bolt detached, allowing the entire guide wheel assembly to fall to the ground completely unnoticed. At around 11.15am, carrying 24 passengers, the defective train departed the platform for its 13th and final run. Once completed, it would be withdrawn from the ride and mechanics would investigate the sounds heard by ride operators earlier. Among the riders was 22-year-old Marcelo Torres, seated in the front passenger car. Riding with him was close friend and business partner Vicente Gutierrez. The two men were visiting the park along with a small group of friends. Despite the train's defective state, it managed to complete the first third of the ride without any sign of trouble. However, after reaching break zone 1 in an uphill tunnel, the floating axle of the locomotive, missing its guide wheel, shifts and begins bouncing along the track. A few moments later, the axle wedges between a track tie and the locomotive itself, causing the locomotive to derail. The train continued moving forward for a few more moments, causing the locomotive's nose to dig down into the track, 
while its rear half pushed up towards the ceiling. Forward momentum would cause the first passenger car to ride up into the underside of the locomotive, pinning Marcel Torres between both. The young man suffered blunt force trauma to his chest and fractured ribs that led to lacerations to his lungs. Rescue workers would attempt to save him, but he would sadly die on the scene shortly after. Ten other passengers suffered moderate to severe injury with the violent stopping of the train. Vicente Gutierrez suffered facial lacerations, concussions, and a fractured rib. He would be taken to hospital by ambulance. He would later say from his hospital bed, We were going into the tunnel, and all of a sudden, I heard something really loud and shaky. I told myself, this isn't normal. From there on, I just blacked out. In the aftermath of the accident, state officials conducted an investigation. The findings would be released three months later. The report criticised park maintenance staff who failed to tighten the bolts, a manager who signed the work off without having actually checked it, and the ride operators who failed to stop the ride upon hearing the unusual noises. Disneyland was ordered to increase its training, and they would ultimately accept blame for the accident. Several lawsuits were filed against them, with all being settled out of court.